Hi, and welcome to another episode. And what I've got here is is the insides of an acorn electron. This is an issue one, going all the way back to 1982. Well, what can I say? Motherboard, power supply unit, speaker. <laughs> well, anyway, I'm sure for those that do follow the channel, you've already seen the electron in its before state. If you haven't, here it is. Don't worry about my hands moving around, not to what I'm obviously saying right now, because I've nicked it from an old video. But as you can see, compared to the uh, plus one stuck on the back, it's a lot more yellow than it should be. So, as you've already gathered from the title, this is a retro writing bit. Now, back to this. <laughs> anyway, I haven't been able to show you what it looks like getting a bath, because I can't do that setup in my bathroom. I don't have the space to have a big Tupperware box thing to do the washing up. Um, I just haven't got to, <laughs> I just haven't got the space. Um, and I also I haven't got any actually showing you retro brighting in the fantastic sun outside. But what I will say is that I want to give a big shout out to Retro Tech Ralph. His channel's here um, and in the description below. But I want to give a big shout out to him because he pointed out that one of the best things to maybe do is to get big plastic bags where they're resealable. I'll give a link down below to where I bought mine from. And with that, basically you put in your 12% cream peroxide. This is the one that I bought. I've no idea if it's as uh, nice as what other people are using, um, but that's what I purchased. It was cheap enough to get uh, such a large bottle. In fact, yeah, it's a litre that's in there. So with that though, um, I smeared it all over the case and the keycaps. The keycaps I pulled by using a keycap puller. It doesn't have to be the same one as this, but a decent enough keycap puller. They come straight up, they're dead easy. Um, with that though, I covered them all in the peroxide cream and then I smudged them inside the plastic bag and then inside the plastic bag I made sure that all the keycaps were facing up which in itself is a boring task but has to be done and pretty much the same for the case of making sure that there's a thin layer of cream you don't have to go crazy I've, I've heard people say that you have to put loads on you don't just a thin layer is enough because if you put a thick layer on you're gonna have areas of where it's thicker than it is in other places so you're going to get streaks and then on the top of that the reason why retro tech ralph had uh, recommended to me the plastic bags is because with cling film or saran wrap or food wrap what do you want to call it um you may well get streaks again because you're going to have overlaps of where the the cling film is too thick and the sun's not getting through to it so i put them out in my garden balance on top of my you know wheelie bins not the normal refuge one you don't want that getting baked you want to keep that in the sun uh, out of the sun you want that in the shadow um but you know the things like your cardboard or your um i don't know like your grass cuttings or something using those ones so that if they do get a lot of sun they're not going to stink the place out or do anything else worrying but um have them on there now the one thing that i added was a big tray you know just like seriously it was bigger than what i can show you here on screen um, and I had that balanced on top of this, which is a turntable, display turntable, or whatever the name is for these things. There's a light in the middle, didn't need to use that. But then plugged into a long um, outside rated extension cable. Um, and had that plugged in, and obviously trying to make sure that there's no even droplets of rain or anything like that, because a little bit overcast might be okay, but you're not going to want... Um, it chucking it down in rain or water getting into those sort of things so make sure that it's rated for that but obviously this thing isn't um, but it's not going to get water on it um, because you've got the tray in the way anyway so that this thing spins around ever so slowly but it's enough so that you don't have to keep going out there and turning it it was my little idea um, it seems to have worked I will say that um, but what I'm going to do now is put all the guts of this back into the electron and then have like a ta-da moment of this is what it looks like now. But, and then what I'll do is 
show you what it looked like before and then back again right wait for it oh while i'm here i also get these bits don't i be very careful when you're removing the keyboard because there is probably a ribbon cable of some sort there's a few different versions be careful of that when you're taking the lid off and also be careful of it when you're putting it back in again also when you're taking out the power supply unit and putting it back in again be very very careful that you don't touch any like solder points underneath and don't hold it in such a way that you're going to hold things up here because this is a very large capacitor by the looks of things and it may well be holding some charge when you're taking it out so you know don't zap yourself and also when you put in the wires back in for here be careful that you've got the correct one for the correct spot on the uh, 18 volt AC in and the return because you could mess things up so just make sure that they're the right way around when you're doing it and obviously be careful of this connector down here as well when you're putting it back but apart from that you know take your time use the correct size screwdriver and uh, take it out with ease and put it back with ease and also when you're coming to do the the keycaps don't forget to actually remove the keyboard from the top part of the case when you put it out to retrobrite but this time you will see it all screwed back together again okay so you're looking at the old way that the electron looked it's all yellow compared to its plus one and but let's have a little bit of a drum roll ta-da and this is what it looks like now a lot better a lot lot better it's a lot more the color of what the plus one looks like i'm really really happy with doing this is the very first time i've done a retro bright it's maybe not perfect but for the first time around i think it's very very good you know it's uh i do think i've done a pretty good job of it maybe it can have another retro bright at some other point in its life but it seems fine the one thing I want to point out to you though for the people that have actually stayed until this length of the video is get your um, painters masking tape out and put strips of that across like the two inch type all the way across there so that you don't bleach this so much probably won't do much damage really but you know just look after it and the same can go for the seal number underneath which matches up with the motherboard um, and then the other thing is to use your flat screw flat headed screwdriver to pop off the feet be very careful you don't want to ruin them but if you keep them in a not in a dusty place or anything resting on them there should be enough stickiness to push them back on again and obviously when it's in use the weight of it will go back if you get very very stuck i'm sure there's replacements out there or a dab of glue right the other thing that I want to point out is the keyboard and the spacebar. When you're removing that, there's the PCB, sort of when you're looking at this edge, there's the PCB, and then there's where the key actually operates from, but it's in the middle. But then there's um, a metal bar that goes all the way across with, helps uh, you know keep it balanced so that it doesn't rock so much. But that metal bar is hooked through some uh, little pegs that are going down with holes in now you can't just pull it straight up you have to s gently bend the bit of plastic that's on there at the bottom and the easiest way of doing that is using some plastic tweezers just to push it off very very gently and the reason for plastic ones is that you don't scrape the pcb because obviously you don't want to ruin any traces or anything like that on the pcb but it pops off and then when it does it on one side you can pull the key upwards and it'll pop away from the middle bit and then you can push it away from the other end of the bar and then just do that in reverse it's a little bit more fiddly putting it back on but um, it's well worth doing that because you don't want to have the keyboard PCB out in the sun now I really do hope this is like being of use and I'm really impressed you know leave some comments down below have a look at the Patreon have a look at the Discord channel don't forget to subscribe and press those up, like, down, horrible, clicky things. And as always, happy gaming.